Hello, this is Lamar, and I'm coming to you from flamegrower.com. And today we're going to discuss how I make a rotisserie chicken. Or several rotisserie chickens. I like to start my fire out by using uh, Kingsford charcoal. I use uh, the base of the, of the charcoal with uh, gasoline lit or gasoline soaked briquettes. And then I put uh, the Kingsford charcoal on top of that. So if you notice, I'm spreading the, the charcoals out in a, in a row. Um, below my grate, I have two pavers, which will help retain some of the heat um, at once I move the charcoals over to the side. And uh, this is pretty typical. I'll just do a spread of um, bladder fluid and then light this baby up. Right now I'm just inspecting my equipment and um, what I'm using for rotisserie, I have a standard uh, 30 something inch rotisserie um, attachment kit on top of my Santa Fe grill. I'm just checking to make sure all of the connections are where they need to be because these things uh, do give over time uh, due to rust, due to, to various uh, conditions from the heat and swelling of the of the screws so you just want to make sure everything is in its right location because the last thing you want to have is your chicken not spinning in the rotisserie because then it defeats the purpose of having rotisserie Right now I'm just adjusting the, the meat forks. What you want to do is make sure when you put your, your meat forks on, you want to make sure they are spaced a certain distance away from the end uh, because when the chicken rotates it may rub against the size of your uh, size of your grill and you don't want that to happen. Um, and also uh, you want to fasten it down with some sort of attachment like a wrench or a small tool. Um, I just happened to use a, a spare piece of, of another rotisserie that I had lying around. So one trick that I like to do when I'm starting my fire, there, there's many different tricks, uh, but one thing that'll help the, the fire grow faster is to drop some, add some fuel to the flame. So I'll just take that chicken fat out of the chicken and just drop that right on the fire. Uh, I'm not too worried about having the, the fire too hot uh, because once I close this grill up, it's going to seal everything in and the temperature will, will decrease um, with the, uh, I have a liquid container inside for some water as well as the, the chickens themselves so I'm not really worried about the uh, the heat aspect or the flame aspect um, I'm more so worried uh, about making sure that my briquettes are, are lit evenly and that I have uh, some, some gray areas on all the charcoal so um, I like to do three chickens on my skewers and what I do is I I don't brine my chickens, I don't soak them, uh, I don't inject them, uh, but what I do do is I put the rub on the inside of the chicken that will allow it to, to baste um, internally um, and once the all the chickens are on the skewers then I'll put some more rub on the outside of the chickens. Uh, the people do their chickens a little bit differently. I don't like to, to trust my chickens. I think it, in this scenario, this configuration, it's a, it's a waste of time, so I don't string my chickens up. So you notice I'm just putting the, the chickens on and filling them up with with the uh, with the rub and the seasonings, and then I'm just going to put that just like it is on the grill. Um, the only one thing which I do do is I tuck the wings in because if you don't tuck the wings in, they'll burn up or they will uh, uh, expand and they will rub against the grate or the charcoals and end up falling out or, eat or being burnt. So you, you definitely want to do something with the wings. Some people clip their wings. Personally, I like the, the, 
the way the, the wings taste the best, so I leave it on there. And you see I'm locking down the end skewer with the tool. The nuts, you don't really have to worry too much about the skewers on the inside, but uh, you definitely want to make sure that the ends are in place. And here's a um, here's the money shot of the chickens. I um, I rotate my chickens a little bit um, on after each chicken. And um, with the exception of the wings, that's how your chicken should look on a skewer. Uh, most of these rotisserie kits only come with uh, one set of meat forks, so you'll probably have to go out um, to eBay or Craigslist or one of these other. Um, marketing sites or on to um, a restaurant supply store to get additional meat forks. They don't come with three sets by default. Um, additionally, you can buy different attachments. So at um, Lowe's and Home Depot, you can buy an attachment for, say, um, say fish or when you do vegetables or some different cages. And I've seen several different attachments uh, as well on Amazon and, and eBay um, where you can put uh, various types of, of meats um, and foods in some sort of cage. So right now I'm letting my fire burn in. You see the smoke coming up. Uh, the charcoals are still lighting. I'm, I'm getting some smoke due to the, the chicken fat that I put on a fire. So that's what's giving me all that smoke. Um, also, the uh, there's uh, probably some residual grease that's in the pit from um, the previous burn burning. So, all right, fast forward. You don't need to really see this part, but basically, uh, I, I am adjusting my coals from the center to the side. I'm making a blank space in the middle so my chickens aren't sitting directly above the charcoals. And so I have some um, toward the back and some toward the front. Um, I also made a little groove, which you, you can't see from this shot, but uh, there's a groove that I can put these two cups of water in to, to keep moisture within the chamber. And that'll also bring down the temperature. Uh, here's the, the rub process, which I was discussing earlier. I'm just uh, rubbing down the chicken. Uh, olive oil is, is an option. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. I haven't had uh, complete success. Some people say it works for them. Me personally, I just let the, the fat from the chicken uh, uh, marinate the, the chicken. Uh, but I was trying something different this time. Um, the benefit of, of doing three chickens at the same time is that you can do different spice rubs on, in, on each chicken. Um, and um, so you can cater to different people's palates, I guess. There's some of the uh, old standard Tony Chachery. And uh, for this time, I decided I wanted to use some, um, some, uh, some jerk seasoning as well. When you're putting on a season, it looks like I'm putting on a lot, but a lot of it is actually falling off because of the way that I'm doing it. The chicken will still be a little bit wet from taking it out of the bag. Um, but it'll start to dry out just from from being in the grill, so a lot of it'll fall off. Also, there'll be some some loss from it, the chicken itself sweating as it's rotating, and the, the liquids and the greases are coming out of it. Um, and that, and that's why you also want to make sure that you have the rub on the inside, because as it sweats, the rub will actually come out of the the chicken and, and start to base the outside as well. jerk seasoning and there's the other jerk seasoning I was trying two different seasonings this this time so um, and they actually came out pretty good both of them one came out was like a sweet jerk and the other one was a spicy jerk So if you notice, I'm, I'm patting down the, the chickens as I'm putting the, the rub on. This rub I'm actually using a lot of because it didn't seem like it was that strong. Uh, so I had to make sure that I covered the, the bird adequately. 
Um, if, if you also look closely toward the end, you'll see the, the chicken rotating and you see uh, this is where it's important that you make sure that you have uh, ample space from the from the edges of the of the grill. If not, the legs or the wings or the breast meat will be rubbing against the edge of the, of the grill. Also, um, what I'm doing now is I'm just tending the coals, making sure they're, they're spaced apart, giving the chicken enough space to, to rotate and, and to turn. Um, if you don't put the chickens on straight, you'll, you may have uh, some tr trouble where the chicken comes down too close to the fire or too close to the coals and you may end up having a burnt spot uh, on, that, on that chicken. Um, it also can put extra strain on your rotisserie uh, due to the extra weight. So you just want to make sure when you are doing the, the skewering of the chickens that you um, try to do it directly in the center of the bird. Okay, so what I'm using for water cups is these, these little mini jello molds or pound cake molds I had in the house. Uh, I tried using the tin foil method, but the material of the tin foil, it just didn't last over time. These molds are, are pretty resilient. I've had them all summer at this point. I pretty much do this rotisserie thing every weekend. And um, they've held up really well. Um, I'd recommend them for any, anybody. Um, they, they keep the moisture in the chamber. They allow conduction to it, so it allows the, the water in it to, to vaporize and to steam. And it also ends up catching some of your oils as the chicken rotates over it. The way I like to do my fire, um, and once again, different people do things differently, um, but I keep the bottom chamber completely open in this Santa Fe grill. You can't see it from this shot, but the the this grill has uh, four vents, two on the top, um, which you see there smoking out, and two on the bottom. And um, I keep the two on the bottom open fully wide, and then I control the heat and the steam, the, uh, the, the smoking smokiness through the top and I'll just open and close those um, as needed. Uh, you can direct the flow. All right, there you go. There's your rotisserie chicken several hours later. Um, I usually do this rotisserie for about uh, two and a half hours. Um, two and a half hours is, is really pretty long. Uh, two hours should, should probably do it for most small sized birds. Okay, so everything looks good, and I am going to um, take it off the grill, get my mitts, and I like to take a pan and uh, or a uh, or a mixing dish to to put everything in, so that way it'll keep the the grease from dripping on the floor when I bring it into the house. Um, what you might want to do is check the temperature of your birds. Um, they have different uh, recommended temperatures uh, for different meats. I believe the, the recommended temperature for chicken is 165. I've been doing this for a while. Um, what I'll do is when I bring it into the house, I'll do a quick temp check. If it's not up to, to temp or if the, the meat just doesn't look right, then I'll just throw it in the oven and you'll be fine doing that because all the smokiness and all the goodness has already been marinated into the meat from sitting on the grill and rotating rotisserie rotating over time excuse me getting tongue tied here and there you go that's the money shot all right once again this is lamar coming to you from flamegrower.com 